Coin Game by J. W. Robertson. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved. This is a work of fiction. All characters and events portrayed in this book are fictitious, and resemblance or connections to real people or events is strictly coincidental. Book 1. The Rules. Chapter 1. San Ramon, a small village in northern Honduras. An arm whips forward and back. A string is pulled. A spitting wind on top hits the ground with top speed and with perfect spin. A large imposing boy spreads his fingers wide and places it near the spinning top. With a quick thrust of his arm, the spinning top skips from the ground to the boy's palm. The bottom of the top is made for a round and off framing nail. The boy has held the spinning top in his hand hundreds of times. And even though it tickles against his palm, it feels comfortable and natural. The top makes a small whirring sound as the boy walks a little circle made in the dirt a few steps away. Inside the circle are five small coins. He walks towards the coin closest to the perimeter of the circle. The coin is a small green looking thing, oxidized and abused. He angles his palm top towards the green coin and he quickly thrusts his hand forward and then back. The top flies off his hand and hits the coin with a loud tink and a puff of dirt. The coin is flung out of the circle. The top finally loses all its momentum, slows down, and falls over. Nearby, four other young boys moan. Ah! Ha! You're out, Alejandro! Yells the large boy. A pale little boy who looks to be about seven size alley. That's okay. There'll be more games. He picks up his ejected coin, places it in his pocket, and slowly walks to the edge of the alley. He sits down on an old paint can and starts to watch the other boys play with his elbows on his knees and his hands under his chin. A car door slams nearby. Alejandro looks up and he sees his favorite person walking down the sidewalk towards him. Maria! Hi, Alejandro. How are you feeling? Great! I have something for you! From my mom! He runs to the edge of the alley, where he privately sees stashed a cardboard box. He picks out with excitement and runs back to Maria. Here you go! My mom can't pay this week, but she wanted me to give you this. Thanks, Alejandro. Tell your mom I appreciate it, says Maria. She smiles at him and ruffles his hair. She continues down the alley to a side door, located about halfway down the alley. She glances back at the game. She sees a puff of dirt fly. She watches a silver-looking coin roll towards the edge of the circle before it stops and falls over. Almost out, but still in play. A large boy yells at one of the other boys. Sergio! I'll get you for that! Maria opens the side door, and she walks into a rented office space. A mixture of cool air, bleach smell, and perfume hits her nose. She sees her secretary, assistant, and friend sitting at a nearby desk. Good morning, Carla. Hi, Maria. I see you got another box. Let me guess. Eggs? Tomatoes? Maria places the box on the front desk. She looks inside. She sees a pile of straw holding a dozen eggs and a handful of tomatoes. She sighs. Yes and yes. I'm getting tired of scrambled eggs and tomatoes. I need gas money and maybe a week off. Carla laughs. laughs. Don't we all? There's a few patients waiting out front. I even saw a few that looked like they might be able to pay. Oh, good. We need that, says Maria. She takes a deep breath, carefully reaches to the middle of her chest, and makes a fist around the coin-shaped pennant at the end of her necklace. She turns her head towards the front of the building and closes her eyes. A few moments pass before she opens her eyes, feeling refreshed and ready. She tells Carla, Let's get started. Grab me some sports drinks and a few stomach tablets, please. Then, maybe, you can cook up some eggs and tomatoes. <laughs> Will do, says Carla. Maria leaves a gift box on Carla's desk and walks to the front door leading to the front waiting room. As she opens the door, she is hit with a smell of vomit and unwashed bodies. Sitting along a long bench, she sees three sets of people. Sitting closest, she sees a young, dark-skinned couple with a small, ill-looking girl sitting between them. The mom looks to be slowly wiping vomit off the girl's mouth. A little further down the bench, she sees a light brown-skinned man in a gray polo shirt and gray slacks. Then at the end of the bench, she sees a super light-skinned man in a white suit. He was so light-skinned, he was probably considered an albino. The suit just enhanced the sentiment. As she enters the room, all the people look up. The young couple smiles. The middle-aged man in gray stands up. And the albino man leans back and wrinkles his nose at the vomit smell. Maria looks at the middle-aged man and says, Please be patient. I'll be right with you. She approaches the young couple and says, Hi, I'm Dr. Hansen. Follow me. She turns around and walks back into the main office room. She sees Carla leaving the patient room after dropping off her requested items. Clean up, need up front. Thanks, she tells Carla. Carla nods and heads towards the waiting room. Maria walks in the patient room with the young family, and she closes the door. 
The young father steps close to Maria, and she is now hit with a strong smell of coffee. He then raises a large bag of coffee in front of her face. We have this for now, and it's the best, and we promise we can try to pay you next week. We heard you do this sometimes, no? Maria smiles and says, Um, yes, I understand. We could do that. What's wrong? The young mother then speaks up. Little Rose won't stop throwing up. She was playing in the platano reserves by her house with some friends, and she's been sick ever since. Maria nods. She puts this young girl and asks for her hand. Hi, Rose. Let me take a look at you, okay? For free hand, she grabs a coin pendant on her necklace again and slowly closes her other hand around Little Rose's hand. The small girl's eyes close, and she takes in a sharp breath. <gasps> Maria's eyes widen, and the girl's pale face slowly begins to get its color back. Maria's face, however, quickly loses its color. A few moments later, though, her color returns. She releases her necklace, touches the girl's forehead, and looks into her face. She then performs a typical doctor office visit. She quickly takes Little Rose's temperature and blood pressure, listens to her heart and lungs, and pokes and prods her neck. She says, She probably caught a little bug in the reserves. And she's really dehydrated. I will give you some sports drinks for the dehydration and some pills for her stomach. Make sure she takes all the pills. Just as she's about to wrap up, Marina suddenly feels a weird feeling in her stomach. It feels as if she was on a roller coaster and just made a big drop. Oh no! How'd they find me? She thinks. Maria looks at Rose's parents. I'm in danger! I need you to go! Now! She points out an outfacing window. Out! Now! No! We help! says Rose's father, stepping forward. Maria lifts up Rose and walks to a large window. As she walks, she speaks to Rose. Protect your mom and dad. Hide. She unlocks the window and lifts it open. Rose nods and climbs out. Ama, says Rose. Maria starts walking to the patient room door, and Rose's parents quickly run to the window and start climbing out. Once Maria sees them disappear, she opens the patient door. As the door opens, she sees the man in gray. She feels a punch to her belly. She looks down. She sees a long, black obsidian sword stabbing into her stomach. The gray man pulls the sword out and steps back. She falls forward and lands on her hands and knees. She looks up to see the gray man step further back. He stands up straight, and he stares at her for unmoving eyes. The black blade in his right hand dripping for blood. For blood slick left hand, Maria grabs her pendant and squeezes tight. The cut in her belly quickly closes, and the bleeding stops. She then pushes herself up onto her knees with her free hand. The gray man swipes at her face with his black sword. Her left cheek is sliced open right below the eye. At the same time, Maria shuffles backwards and behind Carla's desk. The cut below her eye slowly starts to close. Using her free hand, she uses a nearby desk to get up. The gray man watches the facial cut close. Then he smiles. Maria shows Carla's desk chair towards the swordsman. He slices down with his sword and the chair is split into two pieces. While the swordsman is swinging, Maria quickly opens the top desk drawer and pulls out a small revolver. She points it at the swordsman, and he stops moving. She has a roller coaster dropping feeling in her belly again, and she sees the man's sword disappear in a puff of smoke. He shows his sword hand palm up, and his palm is a coin. It's about the same size as her necklace pendant. A blood-curdling scream comes from her right. Maria! Maria looks at the waiting room door. She sees the albino man in the white suit holding one of Carla's arms behind her back his other arm wrapped around her throat. The albino man starts to speak. We know you can survive almost anything, but your friend probably can't, so give us the necklace. Maria points her gun at the man. Without a second thought, she fires at his head. She hears a loud ricochet. The bullet meant for his head missed. She quickly fires twice more. She sees flashes near the albino's head. At the same time, she hears her bullets ricochet. The albino twists Carlo's arm, and she starts to scream in pain, and the man yells, Stop, or she dies! Maria screams, Two of you? Why can't you just leave us alone? We aren't bothering you. We're out of the game. You're a doctor. You're smarter than that. The game never ends. Give it to us, says the man. Okay, but let us go. Please. Sure, hand it over. For a hand gripping the pendant, Maria slowly lifts the necklace over her head. She thrusts it in front of her, and she walks around the desk towards Carla and the man. Let her go. The abano man slowly releases Carla and steps her aside, both hands up, one tightly closed into a fist. Maria tosses the necklace in the air towards the albino man, and for other hand, she fires the three main bullets from the revolver into the swordsman. 
An albino man catches a necklace with his free hand, and he turns to see his partner in gray fall to the floor, three bullet holes in his chest. Run! Maria grabs Carla and slams through the waiting room door. Then they sprint past the waiting room benches and out the front door. Maria and Carla run to a rusty old American car. Fifty years past its prime. They tear open the rusty doors with a loud squeal and hop in. As the car sputters to a start, Carla looks back at the front door and yells, Why isn't he following us? They will be. One of them just needs to figure out how to heal first. It's hard the first time. Maria puts the car into gear. With a loud backfire, she drives off. A minute later, the man in gray and albino man exit the front door. The swordsman's shirt is covered in blood, but he moves as if he is unharmed. They look left and see the young family of the sick girl running to another building down the street. They look right, and they see a rusty car driving away. They run across the street to a shiny rental car. The albino man starts the car, and he makes a tight U-turn so as to follow Maria's rust bucket. He hears and feels loud thumps and bumps. He can sell something wrong with the car. He stops. They both get out. They both see four flat tires. Sticking out of each tire are wooden tops. Their framing now ends, jammed into the tires. Off in the distance, they see a rusty brown car turn a corner and disappear. Nearby in the street, a pile of coins shine brightly in the sun.